Okay, people, this is not a video. <laughs> it's not a video about climbing trees, but it could be. Yeah. Instead, it's a video about a disease called Fusarium. Fusarium oxysporon. Fusarium oxysporon variety canariensis. Because this is Dale a canary jalando, yeah. This is a canary paw. Alright? Named for the canary ant. Alright, so the deal is this tree's dead. Well it's not dead yet, but it's dying. Alright? Let me tell you why it's dying. So the reason it's dying is it's infected by this pathogen, uh, which is a fungus, which I'll say one more time, Fusarium oxysporon variety canariensis. And it's, uh, you know, all funguses are spore driven. Uh, in the case of this one, this particular fungus is mainly distributed by people who trim palm trees who shouldn't be trimming palm trees because they don't understand that they can get these trees sick from trimming the trees. Do you see those recent cuts? Do you see, those are old cuts. In fact, these are cuts I probably made long ago. I used to take care of this place. I'll give you a little tour. It's pretty awesome. But somebody else takes care of it now and I'm not pointing fingers and I don't even know who's doing it and I'm not gonna say anything other than making this video. If you know who you are, you better hide. Anyway, this poor tree uh, was, in, was, was infected by a unsterilized, unclean uh, saw that had previously inf uh, been in contact with another tree. You guys ever heard of AIDS? This is kind of like that, right? So the whole tree has a vascular system. That's like the blood system of a person. But instead of uh, sending, you know, blood around, it's sending water and sugar. It gets, it creates sugar up in the top of the tree from photosynthesis. It draws water from underneath and that stuff moves throughout the entire tree. And it makes this unbelievable process. It creates all the life you see on this planet. So um, this particular fungus disrupts the ability of the tree to deliver water. So that's why you'll see that the top will sort of be the last to die. It dies from the bottom up. What's also interesting about this disease is you can always tell which side of the tree became infected first. So you see over here, we have green lower down, right? Now over here, it's all dead. It's all dead. And as you go around the tree some more, you'll see some of the fronds are actually perfect looking. Like, look at that one right there. That's a lower tear frond and it looks fine. So this tree picked up this disease from, I'm guessing, right about there. Um, that was the epicenter. And then it moves throughout the tree. Now, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't take care of this place anymore. Um, I did for a long, I installed all these trees like 20 years ago. I'll give you a quick tour. Uh, and I took care of it for like five or six years or something eight years, 10 years, I don't know. 2008 came along and there was this thing called the Great Recession. <laughs> and nobody paid their rent. And then they couldn't afford to pay their palm tree guy, me. So they let me loose and they had the regular landscape gardener guy take over. Trees have never looked uh, as good again as when I left them. But anyway, that's what happened. No big deal because I was getting tired of trimming these trees anyway. And I wasn't as desperate for money as I used to be. Um, in other words, I'm less of a cheap whore. I'm still, I'm still a cheap whore, but, you know, just, just a little bit less of a Anyway, trimming these trees is really difficult. So, um, you basically, uh, to prevent this disease, you need to have this pathogen never come in contact with these trees. The pathogen, history of the pathogen. Uh, I believe 1976, you had, uh, 76, 86, sometime in there, you had introduction from France, I believe, or Europe somewhere, it came to California. All right. Before that, I don't know how it occurred, where it came from, whatever, but it hit the United States shores, California first. Um, it's probably in Florida now. But it hit California in like the 70s or 80s. I didn't know about it until about the year 2000. Then I heard Southern California people talking about it, Southern California growers. 
It still was incredibly obscure, and it really wasn't in Northern California at all. But then what happened was all these people started growing palm or, or, or moving palms from Southern California to Northern California. And then guess what happened? Right. The disease followed the trees, came with the trees, got planted out. People trimmed the trees up here. They moved the disease around. Next thing you know, now we have it. So that's how uh, it's kind of like this thing called COVID started in China and then it came here. And now <laughs> the rest is history, right? So uh, anyway, kind of like COVID, kind of like AIDS, uh, there's a way to prevent it. And the way to prevent it is to buy a brand new saw every single time you uh, deal with one of these trees. Now we use extreme protocol. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story of the opposite of extreme protocol. One of my competitors, the biggest dealer in these trees in Southern California, I just happened upon their yard one time in Southern California and they had this mountain of dead trees in the middle of the yard surrounded by what looked to be a bunch of healthy trees. And then, uh, they basically had uh, this, this giant pile of dead trees. And I was like, what's going on? These people kill a lot of trees. This is crazy. That's not very profitable. I talked to a guy who worked there and I said, what do you do about fusarium, you know? And he's like, well, whenever one of those trees dies of that damn disease, we just take it away from the good trees and we put it in a big pile in the middle of the nursery and we keep them separated. That's like, that's like thinking you've got Ebola because there's a big Ebola outbreak going on. People dying on the sidewalks. Cruising into the emergency room. And, uh, you know, you're in the emergency room and suddenly some people in the emergency waiting room are just dying in the emergency room and just laying on the floor and oozing black stuff out of their eyes however you die with Ebola. And then the people who work at the emergency room going, oh, you know what? Let's just pile those people up in the middle of the room and everybody else that's healthy still, just stay on the perimeter. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that. Anyway, so yeah, they would just make a giant pile of trees, leave them in the middle, and then uh, whatever. That whole entire yard had fusarium spores everywhere. So that was probably the point of origin of like 90% of infections. Because I see these installations where people use Southern California trees, and I swear, one out of four installations Within a year or two or three, sometimes it takes three years. Their guarantee is only for a year. They uh, they go south and they die, and then they call me. They probably called me the first time, and I gave them my quote. But the Southern California guys were cheaper. You know why? Because they're more efficient. Because they basically just pile the trees in the middle of their yard when they're dead, and keep the good ones on the edge, which are the ones they sell to you. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't even have trees in our yard. We stop bringing trees into our yard. The only way we get trees, we go out in people's yards in Northern California where this disease is really rare. And then we look at the trees. We have to say, okay, you know what? In order to qualify for to be one of our trees, you have to not have been trimmed by anyone for three years, all right? And if it hasn't been gotten sick after three years, it's probably fine. That's rule number one. Rule number two is uh, the whole neighborhood has to look like there's no disease of, uh, around in the neighborhood because a bird could move it. Well, I don't want to have that risk. So that's rule number two. Rule number three is we buy a brand new chainsaw for every single tree and we dedicate it to that tree for the rest of that tree's life. This guy I met that worked for the other place said, oh yeah, you know, we bleach our saws. You can't bleach this problem away because the oil in the chainsaw will inoculate the, uh, the pathogen. So this is a pretty good rant, isn't it? Anyway, I get, I get mad when I talk about this. I get mad as hell. I'm mad as hell. So anyway, here I am at this center where I installed all these trees, right? This place has the most to lose here. And now one bit of history was when I actually was taking care of this place, there was a tree over there. Suddenly got sick. I'm like, oh my goodness. Here comes the disease, right? I tested it. It was positive. And it was right after people during Palm Sunday, the religious holiday, they would come down here and they would cut off these fronds and use them for Palm Sunday. They basically steal palm fronds and they cut fronds from the whole entire city and they brought that disease to this site. Now, I actually, I actually saw the disease and figured it out and told the management immediately. I'm like, hey, this tree's sick. I told them all about the disease. This was when it was brand new, like 2004, 2005. 
people didn't know much about it. I'm like, we need to get rid of this tree. We got to do it in a way where we do not spread this pathogen around the center. So we don't want to risk the rest of these trees. And uh, then they basically said, okay, do whatever you got to do. And I told them, I'm like, you know what? Your whole entire shopping center might die because this thing is here now. And it's because of these people from Palm Sunday coming out in the middle of the night, cutting off these palm fronds with infected printing equipment that they infected somewhere else and brought it here. The tree was right over here. There were two trees here. Now there's only one. Now it was right next to this tree. So I immediately got a tractor that I would never use again that I rented because I didn't want to use my own tractor because I didn't want to infect it. And then I basically pulled the tree out, got the whole thing out of one piece, put it in my truck, put visqueen in my truck, and then uh, treated it like an Ebola victim and uh, got rid of the thing at a dump. And I did not take it to a landfill that chops it up into little bits and pieces and makes mulch out of it and redistributes it to everyone else's garden all across the world to put the disease everywhere. No, I took it to a place where they buried it forever. I bid jobs against people who I know are sending trees to chipping facilities cheapest place to send them to and they chop it all up in little pieces and they make mulch out of it and they sell it and people put it in their gardens everywhere you see why i'm mad as hell anyway so beautiful tree there's the one that so this one was saved i i, I was remarkable i thought it was remarkable that one here could die of the disease that one could be fine so anyway now you know the history of what's going on here here's all these trees they've been here 20 years um and so the whole idea is i don't even take care of this place i don't even know who's in charge anymore but I was driving by on the freeway one day and I looked over at this tree. And I'm like, that tree looks like it has fusarium. It was just the beginning stages. And I'm like, I gotta call these people up. So I, there was a, look, see there's a for lease sign over there. I got the phone number, called them up. They put me in charge of the property manager. I'm like, hey, you got a problem? And uh, she's like, okay, come over here. Let me pay some money, test this tree, test it. It was positive. I'm like, Gary, what's the best thing to do here? I looked around, all the other trees look fine for the moment. Although they were recently trimmed as well at the same time as that one. Um, so who knows? It might take a while. They might show up to be infected too. Who knows, right? You gotta use extreme protocol. And look, here's an old faded sign from about 2002. Still, uh, don't call that number, call this one. That one doesn't work. That one still works. That one's in my pocket right now. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm like, we gotta get rid of these trees. Otherwise, this thing's gonna spread everywhere. And uh, so we're gonna yank this thing out. And what else do you need to know about this disease? Uh, plant Chilean wine palms, if you can. But uh, these trees are pretty fabulous. But you can still have this tree if you manage this problem really, really well. So uh, don't let anyone else trim your trees other than the chainsaw that I sold you or supplied to you at the time I sold you your tree. And use extreme protocol. And now the break is officially over. It's actually not really a break. They're getting paid while I talk. I told them, let's take a break. I need to tell the world about this problem. Isn't that a tragedy though? Look, the good news is this tree is so far on the extremity of this whole entire place that it's, it's kind of pretty far away. We're going to cut this tree one cut. We're going to pull the whole thing down. We're going to put it in this truck with a bunch of uh, visqueen, take it straight to the dump in one piece so we don't create a whole bunch of dust, unnecessary dust. It probably has the pathogen in it. We want to minimize contamination of the site and, uh, and everything else. And that's pretty much all I know. I gotta get busy now. The sun is going down over Mount Tam right now. So it's, I mean, that, that new growth, it's so sad to see the way it, you know, you can see what it used to look like. It's way more than sad. It's horrifically sad. Come on, use your adjectives. I'm just really It's sad. so sad. It is really I'm so sad. sad. You wanna be in my movie? <laughs> I'm trying to teach the world not to trim these trees with infected pruning equipment. So the thing is, it at least is separated from. Well, that's what I talked. Yeah, that's what I talked about in the video. This is if you're going to have a tree get infected. This is the exact tree you want to be infected. It's so far removed from the rest of the trees. So everybody, that's Lynn. If you want to rent any kind of commercial real estate, you sell that stuff too. You just buy and you sell. You sell. I'm just a property manager. You okay, oh, she's just a property manager. <laughs> if you want your property managed professionally in such a way as to not have uh, a deadly palm disease spread throughout your center, she is your person. Anyway, so it's Lynn who I talk to. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to teach everybody, Lynn, about. They need to know. They need, they to, know. need to know. It's so wow. sad. Anyway, so well, the whole. Who knows how this one got him? Well. 
Well, you know, it's got those fresh printing cuts up there. So I have, I have, I don't want to play fingers. I have my suspicions, yeah. but well, I mean, I have to just tell you what I see. And yeah. That's it. Yeah. But anyway, the whole name of the game here is to get this tree out without hurting that, that $200 no parking sign. <laughs> Isn't that the goal? I can replace the sign. <laughs> the light. I know. Here. We got a really yeah. nice, really nice light up there. I promised her I wouldn't touch that. The parking sign may meet its fate today. We'll see. It's, it's, it's so exciting. There it is. It's, it's too bad that we didn't get that on camera. That's what I couldn't reach with the chainsaw. And that was what was holding it up. This whole thing was being held up by just that much structural area. Look, we have a perfect hole to plant an agave in. Here's our big dead tree. Everybody was wondering how we were going to do it. Now we're losing all of our fans. And I didn't get it on camera. But uh, this is testament to how strong these trees are because uh, they, uh, they have, uh, they're so strong that they have to withstand hurricanes, right? And look, I cut around the whole entire thing and this tractor and this crane couldn't pull it over for an extremely long period of time. And finally, after like half an hour of more cutting, uh, we got it done. We want to make one cut because we don't want to just put sawdust like as much all over the place. We want to limit it. And look, we saved that sign. We saved that sign. And we saved that fire hydrant right there. I think it was a success. Now we just got to put it in this truck right here. That's a good question, Lynn. <laughs> I'm going to pick that bad boy up. I'm going to put it in the truck. We're going to cut off all those fronds and put it underneath it. And then we're going to clean up. We're going to roll down the road. And I'm going to wait for a check to come in my yes, mailbox. Absolutely. Every one. Very <laughs> yeah. fast. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, so then. there's a beer in your future. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's tonight. Yeah. yeah. After yeah. I get the beast home. They don't yeah. like it when you drive these trucks with no, 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 a, no, with a breath of enough. anything. <laughs> so then where can you take this? I have to take it to a hike. Uh, um, basically a landfill that will bury it. A lot of places will actually chip this stuff and then they send it out to gardens all over the area and then guess what happens then it infects every single <laughs> other canary island exactly. on my property yeah. yeah so i know i've done jobs for removals where i bid against guys where i know they are chipping it up and sending it to recycled places and, and, and owners just don't and that's really irritating owners just <laughs> don't know that's like hiring someone to come to your house and clean up all your stuff and you give them all your garbage to take to the dump and then you drive into work one day and you get halfway to work on the side of the road and you see all your stuff dumped on the side of the road. Has that ever happened to you? It happens to people and it ends up back there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you deal, you're, you're the dump. <laughs> yeah. And then we have to take the yeah. dump. Anyway, so that was uh, phase one of getting rid of this stuff. Very good. Well, here I am in beautiful Mill Valley. One of the most picturesque places around and certainly high rent quite a bit higher rent actually and uh why am i uh <laughs> why am i here videoing this well <laughs> yeah see you thought you thought I was lying. <laughs> Always um, get the receipt from the guys that are taking your stuff to the dump. <laughs> because otherwise you never know if it actually ended up in the dump. Um, you can see like it might end up here. Yeah, it looks like they forgot their lunch. And down into the ravine um, where it doesn't belong. So, you know, when you, when you get a guy or a girl who's like, yeah, I'll do that job for 50 bucks. I'll haul all that stuff away and take it to the dump for 50 bucks. And you're thinking, dang, I haven't been in the dump in a long time, but you'd think it would cost more than $50 to dump this stuff. <laughs> and then uh, you say, well... Is that going to cover the dump fee? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and some other guy bids it at $250. Go with the guy at 250 bucks. Right? Or make, make the first guy show you the receipt before you pay him. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just trying to keep it real. Trying to keep it real.
Oh boy. That's a big boy. A big, big, big boy. Push harder, Joel. Must, Joel. This has been a public service announcement of Golden Gate Palms. Any of the views and opinions that have been expressed here are purely uh, what we believe. <laughs> and that, my friends, is, as my beloved father used to say, how the cookie crumbles. Well, I don't want to bring this back to my nursery, so I'm being extremely careful with my protocol. Can't afford a shower. Yeah. <laughs> I just cut down an infected tree. I don't want to bring the pathogen back. This guy's been looking at me like, what's wrong with that guy? It's okay, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you don't want to bring the pathogen back to the nursery, so you clean yourself off real good. Just like that, and then you dry off, real good, no problem. My hands are already clean. At least I cleaned up as much as I could. I'm gonna take my shirt off, load it in the truck, put this with all the infected material. And that's how you do it, right there. Luckily for me, there was a Fuel 24 seven right next door to where we were working. And I think that now will officially be the end of this most sad video. But maybe this will save some trees. People will stop trimming these trees using dirty equipment. And uh, that will be that. Time to go home finally. So. I want to prove to you that I'm not mulching this thing. I'm not sending it back out to the world in compost. I'm sending it to a high uh, hazard. Well, not high hazard. They're just going to bury this out here. Look, I'm out here in uh, beautiful Vacaville. This is a Vacaville dump. This guy's going to try to kill me. Oh, no. Oh, no, he's not. Anyway, uh, you know, you've got some really beautiful scenery here with uh, planes coming in from Travis Air Force Base. But, uh, my bit of advice to you guys is when you hire someone to uh, get a bunch of stuff and take it to the dump, don't pay them until they come back with the receipt from the dump showing that they dumped the stuff at the dump. Because uh, there's a lot of beautiful little country roads out there. It's got a lot of couches on them that aren't supposed to be there. So anyway, my client, uh, she doesn't have anything to worry about. I'm here. I'm dumping it. This pond will get buried forever. It will not get recycled. It will not get chipped up. It will not find its way back into the world again. It will forever be buried right here. And uh, that's uh, pretty much all you need to know right there. Please sterilize your pruning equipment before you prune your canary palms, especially your canary palms. You should do all of them that way. It's gonna make for a better, prettier, more tropical world with less palm tree death. And that is the end of the, the, the end of the very sad but informative show. Don't let your palm tree end up like that. Don't do it. Not worth it. Okay, so actually, 
the show is not quite over just yet. We have one more thing to do. I'm in a secret, undisclosed location. I have to keep it secret. I don't want you coming here because I like to come here and swim, you know? Sometimes I don't like to wear my clothes. That might freak you out. So anyway, what do we have to do? One more order of business, right? Well, everything we touched that palm tree with is contaminated, including my shoes, my shirt, everything. I basically went home barefoot the other night and took my shirt off. And uh, so I'm obviously going to wash this, but I'm going, you know, I'm going right by the river. First, before I wash it, before I wash it, I'm going to wash, uh, wash everything. You know, and even today I was uh, fooling around with that tree at the dump and I was wearing, well, shoes and all kinds of stuff, right? So let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And of course I myself was there. So that gives me a really good excuse to get wet and, uh, you're going to want to see what I do with that truck right there. You're not going to believe it. But right now, decontam. Okay, so don't misconstrue this. Uh, many, many of you know that uh, this fresh water will not kill the uh, spores from the, uh, the tree that may have come in contact with these things. However, there's an enormous amount of dust on these things uh, from the tree. And at least I'm getting rid of that. So I'm getting rid of like probably 90% of the stuff. We'll probably soak all this stuff in bleach. Uh, and we, of course, sweep out the truck somewhere where it's far from my nursery. And um, somewhere where there's no canary palms. Like here, look, do you see any canary palms anywhere? No, they're not here. And uh, I got to believe that, you know, wherever this water's going to go, it's going to be, they'll be dead by the time they get to a canary palm. So anyway, there's only one more thing do here. All right, every si ever since I've owned a crane, I've always wanted to do that. As far as I know, I didn't break any laws, but I'm the kind of guy that causes laws to be made. So I fully expect to sign here. Next year, when this video goes viral, it says, no rope swings from cranes allowed. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Oh yeah. It's like Cal Worthington, you know, you gotta do some cool advertising for your company other than just talking about plants. Here is Cal Worthington at his dog spot. If you need a better car, go see Cal. For the best deal by far, go see Cal. If you want your payment slow, if you wanna say some dough, go see Cal, go see Cal, go see Cal. Any model, any make, go see Cal. Give your pocketbook a break, go see Cal. Save some money, save some time, save a nickel, save a dime, lower prices every time, go see Cal. Oh, your lockies on the blink, go see Cal. Maybe later than you think, go see Cal. Thousand cars from push to choose, let him drive away your booze, go see Cal, go see Cal, go see Cal. Lowest payments in this town, go see Cal. For the lowest money down, go see Cal. It's a giant supermarket, save a bundle, play it smart, from the dealer with a heart, go see Cal. If you're little short of cash, go see Cal. Trouble's over in a flash, go see Cal. The down payment heel arrange, get a 10-day truck change, go see Cal, go see Cal, go see Cal. If you want more for your trade, go see Cal. Better deals are never made, go see Cal. If you need a car or truck, if you want to save a buck, if you want to change your luck, go see Cal. If you want a better buy, go see Cal. You're the guy who's 
satisfied, pussy cow. He owned a new car, took your wife, she put a love you all her life, pussy cow, pussy cow, pussy cow. If your axle is a sagging pussy cow, maybe need a station wagon, pussy cow. If your wife has started nagging, then your tailpipe is a dragon, pussy cow, pussy cow, pussy cow. Long Beach is where he's at, pussy cow. Hey, that dog looks like a cat, pussy cow. When you go out to the lot, better watch out for old Spot. If he gets a little hot, pussy cow. If you're looking for a better set of wheels, I will stand upon my head to beat all deals. 